Well, tell me about your experiences with psychedelics. I've been doing them forever. <laughs> tell me. <laughs> Everything. Um, I've done them all from, from DMT to peyote. Tell I, me about your experience on DMT. I wasn't a fan of DMT. Really? No. I did vape. Three hits. I blasted off. It's about 10 minutes only. And I came back. And that's it. I recall the first 35 seconds where it's like, whoa. My next thing I want to do is 5-MEO DMT. I've done it. Oh, you've done 5-MEO. The ego, <laughs> yeah. So that's my next thing I want to do. The most beneficial for me uh, from like a truly psychedelic experience was probably I've done, if I had to guess, was 10 grams of mushrooms. I don't like mushrooms. Like at all. Yeah, I would rather do like DMT yeah. or, yeah. Yeah, once again, it's not a panacea. So yeah. for me, like when it comes to like real second, that was the best. I've done peyote. Um, LSD is okay, but I don't get that many insights off of LSD. It's not like I come back. This, I don't integrate it quite well. So the best integration for me has been, actually believe it or not, best integration for me, at least for my issues, has been MDMA. Yeah, I would believe that too. For, I've, for an actual integration. Yeah. So going through a process, writing it down, journaling it, understanding it, what did I just experience, and then kind of working through that. Uh, but I'm big on microdosing. So I'm not, a, I'm, not, I'm not big on psychedelics for general public. I think tripping is amazing. I think there's no such thing as a bad trip or a good trip. It's just a trip. You just have to experience it. But I'm not in the camp of recommending to people like, hey, go do a hero's journey or do yeah. or, or 5-MEO where it's like that shit will rip you apart. Mm -hmm. um, and so... And Paul Statmitz talks about this. A lot of studies are now coming out where there's a lot of amazing benefits from microdosing. Whether mm -hmm. it's microdosing psilocybin, we're talking about like maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 types of doses. Uh, through, for example, what I've loved, I've been experimenting with microdosing is Iboga. So, you know, you feel a little bit like tiny, tiny stuff. Maybe your equilibrium is off for like 20 minutes and disappears. But when you look back in hindsight, and you kind of analyze the day, it's like, it's different, yeah. But we just need more studies. Yeah, for we sure. We need the studies, I yeah. mean, even, we were just talking about cannabis. Are we recording now? Yeah, we're recording. Okay. <laughs> I can do the intro after. <laughs> um, so we were just talking about cannabis, but I mean, like, it's the same thing within, like, cannabis. I mean, we didn't really have the studies that should have been in place prior to, uh, business really coming in and plowing through yeah. that space. Yeah. Well, for me, my biggest concern for cannabis right now is the edibles. Mm. So I've personally overdosed twice in my life from drugs. And I was young. I was about, my first overdose was 17 or 18. And then the following summer, I had a second overdose. And both these overdoses were at, let's call them outdoor raves. Like I was a raver before raving was cool like deep raving in Algonquin Park at Trudeau Park over there and like generators everywhere and just, and I was popping uppers and downers, whatever. It was a dispensary. Give me anything. Alcohol, cocaine, you name it. But those types of overdoses were, oh shit, my heart's beating a mile, a hundred miles per minute. I'm puking. I see stars. I pass the fuck out. And next thing I know, I'm in the ambulance or they didn't have, but they didn't have an ambulance. They actually had like uh, medical centers over there. They know people and I'm an IV. There's monitors on me. It's like, thank God you're here. Uh, so the actual experience of me having pain wasn't really pain. The pain was maybe for like 10 minutes of me going to blackout mode. The worst fucking experience I had ever of any drug was edibles. Worst ever fucking experience. I must have taken anywhere between 500 to 600 milligrams of edibles, brownie. Friend made it. We're guesstimating how much I took, mm -hmm. right? Because who knows the tinctures and the oils they put in. But for literally, I think like eight to 10 hours, I was gray. I was uh, cold sweat. Uh, I was puking and diarrhea back and forth from the washroom and shaking this nonstop shake like this, sitting on the bed and through a wormhole of death like this, not feeling my body. Mm -hmm. And thinking I'm about to die every second of my life. I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Back and forth. And I've never touched edibles since. Yeah, that would that is not something that interests me at all either. <laughs> Even like recently, I was um, 
yeah, the I mean, maybe it was how you described the diarrhea and vomiting yeah. that I was like, well, not for me. Um, yeah, edibles are not for me either. Even the microdose aspect, I actually uh, a close friend of mine has an edible company and they make phenomenal edibles in California. And um and they make it with really good ingredients because I think that's another thing too. I mean, like not everybody – like some people are on the keto diet and all yeah. these kinds of things. Yeah, yeah. And they don't want to be popping like sugary gummy bears and um, it's not the same kind of experience. Like not everybody's looking for that kind of experience. And he was like, yeah, it's just one – like the way I get really enthusiastic about like a new like hemp cleansing face – wash is the way that he got really enthusiastic about his his like gummy keto um bite and so I know what that feel it like that enthusiasm feeling is like so I couldn't be like no like when he was like oh check this out like you should totally try one it's it's microdose it's one um like one milligram and I was like all right that can't sound so bad and like of course like I'm sharing that enthusiasm and I just popped it and like a couple seconds later I was like yeah, I'm not meant to have edibles. <laughs> like I, and then I was like terrified of what was coming my way. And then I was headed to another meeting mm. and I'm sitting in this meeting with like some people that I really admire in business and um, I'm invested in their company and really excited about the things that they're doing in the cannabis space as well in California. And I am just sitting there in a, in like a casual meeting, dead silent staring to the point where they were like, B, are you okay? And I was like, oh, I just got to be honest. Like, I am high as fuck off of a one milligram. It was one gum. milligram. Wow. And I was like, this is clearly like my, maybe the way that my body like metabolizes or, you or something. One like, I don't, know. I don't know. It was delicious. It was amazing. But like, I am really, really high right now. Like, I can't function. But then he, he had like a ping pong. A table in his office and he was like okay well like let's play ping pong and have a meeting at the same time like keep your hands busy like let's go do something and so I was like the master of ping pong so I mean there's there just has to be a way to market it because mm. I mean if it was marketed to me as like you're gonna have laser focus yeah, and yeah. be like you're gonna be able to win every ping pong master after ha popping this keto bite. Then I would have like known what to expect. But the fact that like we and it behaves so differently for every single person, yeah. um, like psychedelics or anything like that too. That like it's really hard to kind of narrow it into that. So to your point, I think there just needs to be so much more study because yeah, if I would not have had that keto bite and then stepped into a meeting where I'm just staring off into space, like <laughs> this is why I'm kind of interested to see how the uh, how they roll out the the rules here in Canada. For